Hey everyone, how are we all doing? It is Friday and it's pretty hot outside and I don't know why I'm talking like this. But anyway, <laughs> it's a scorcher outside today and I can't sit out in that. I only went out because I had the super glue part of my card, you know, this like a strip on my card to glue, super glue that back on because somehow it's, it was hanging off. Drinking banana milkshake because I've got major heartburn, even though I've had it. It's that one, Yazoo or what, whatever you call it. I'm not a big fan of I don't like chocolate. I like chocolate, but I don't like chocolate milkshake. Look, anyhow, what is your favourite milkshake before I get into today's video? So, I was just talking about, I was just looking at stuff on Instagram and a post caught my eye, and I thought, you know what. That sounds like my teenage years. Let me just write something down because I've just thought of something and if I don't write it down, I will forget it. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot I was recording for a minute there. So... So, like I said, I've seen this post and I thought, you know what, that just sounds so spot on with how my childhood was. Now, my childhood, I didn't have my, I had my mum, I lived with my mum and my dad, it was an alcoholic and I only ever saw him whenever he felt like showing up. But half the time I didn't want to see him because he was drunk and he wasn't a nice person. Um, anyway, I, like I said, I brought... We're brought up with my mum, she had ag agoraphobia, no fault of her own. She tried, you know, she did her best with us all. She were great, you know. We had our meals cooked, cleaned, did our washing. And yeah, the only thing she couldn't do is go outside, which I felt awful for because, you know, if anyone suffers with agoraphobia, you will know that you, you can't go out. And if you try to go out, you panic and you start, you know, and everything. Um, but the only downside of my childhood was my mental health, which was impacted by the severe bu bullying we all experience from. So when we moved to the new area, that's when it all started. And it started off with the odd mm, Simpson, you know, because that was my maiden name back then. And my surname, should I say. Um, and you just get picked on, oh, where's Salisa, where's Bart, and, you know, uh, Omer, you know what I mean? And then it started because we didn't have a dad on with us. It was, it started off silly, but then it started getting really bad. And it, I used to have really bad panic attacks when I was younger, and I used to run round in a circle. That was my me coping mechanism. I used to get a slap round head for it, like... That's before my mum got stuck in the house. She used to come and pick us up from school. Some slight she used to set me off in a panic and I was always like an emotional child. Um little things just got to me and obviously thinking now, yeah, I I did have some kind of mental health back then. But then the bullying started and like I said, it started off little little comments here and there and then it got really bad where because we had to walk ourselves to school, we got it on the way to school, in school, on the way home from school. If we were allowed to play, no, we was allowed to play out, but in the garden, my mum kept us in the garden for our own safety because the local kids, it wasn't just one kid, it was the old state kids, they all thought, well, she's doing it, we'll do it, and oh, there is an easy target. And we just have to come back in. And even when we're inside, they throw stuff at our windows. And you can imagine as a kid, you, you like the fear inside. Then I, I felt really depressed and upset all the time, going, Why is this happening? You know, and then obviously I started getting those dark thoughts, then going, Who wants to live like this? Getting obviously bullied from the moment you wake up you, you you're looking out the window and kiss they're all stood there throwing stuff at our windows and the amount of times I broke it it was unreal uh the police back then did not give two hoots oh we'll walk a different way yeah we have a freaking kid in the house uh, in, on the estate and I mean every kid 
when they say obviously they're all scattered they saw you walking they've come out mm -mm -mm -mm. oh they followed me to the shop because I, I was about eight seven or eight and I used to go and do the shop for my mum obviously I had like a phobia she couldn't come out um, and get a bit of, and it were a daily thing because mum liked to get daily milk and cigarettes and stuff like that back then you could I could pick up a cigarettes because the guy knew my mum and on the way there, we get our nail cards, things thrown at us, pushed. I remember one time I was walking up the road with a shopping, two bottles of sterilised bottles of milk. I remember those. They were like tall glasses. I don't know why she liked that milk. I think it was probably because it was cheap at the time. Um, and all I felt was something just go around my neck like that. It was just hooked up and started strangling me. Um, that scared me to death. Caught mum called the police. Please just because we didn't know where they lived or who did it because they did it that tight and then they ran laughing their heads off and obviously that messes with your head a little bit you know what I mean like, what, what's wrong with me why are people picking on me um my sister and my brother well my brother didn't really go out that often um and when he did he got it we all got it at school apart from me sorry Millie really scared me apart from my elder sister because she went to a different school and then she left home Move, uh, at 15 I think and moved in with someone anyway but yeah we got it day in day out and you know we as a kid you couldn't even go out and play if we did play it we like wait till everyone's gone and then we played out but as soon as they all came knew we were out we'd uh, they, all, they all come because we lived our back garden and then we had a neighbour and then there were a snicket a lane type thing where you can cut from one street to another you know what I mean in England, well, where, where, where I'm from, it's called Snickets. You cut through to the next street. And they'd stand in Snicket and call us name, throw stones at us. So that meant we'd go in inside. Oh, it was horrible, just growing up. And obviously that does impact on your mental health. You're like, what's wrong with me? Crying, can't sleep, depression. At that age, suicidal thoughts I had. And I remember once when I... I was a bit older because it carried on for a good. We started off in first school, all the way through middle school and even in high school. It happened for 16 years and I'm not lying. I remember because I've counted from the age it started. And I mean, I was 21 when it stopped. Even then they were giving it that. But because I never retaliated or spoke up or even the school. My mum reported at the school and we got called a liar. Nothing like that happens at school. And because... My son, not my son, my brother has a nervous laugh. He laughs when he's nervous. That's when he called us, we all got called a liar. And we got detention for it and put, <coughs> sorry, um, just let the dog out of room. So, yeah. And I think that has just come from childhood all the way through to my adulthood. And I have dealt with that now through therapy. But this, this, I wrote this down because I saw it on uh, Instagram and it says, does anyone else who's had years of mental illness feel like they don't really fit in anywhere emotionally? Like my teenage years were stolen from me, so sometimes I still feel like I'm, I'm a kid. But also pain has aged me, but I'm not at the same place as other adults my age. Do you know what I mean? Does anyone understand that? That that kind of jumped out and I thought, you know what, that sounds so right. But, uh, yeah, like I say, as a kid, I only had one friend and even then she like um, flipped from me to another. So the majority of the time I just played in the playground on my own, just stood in the corner, getting names. Uh. Oh, anyway, so that's, that's the saying I found. And that's just jumped out of me and I'm like, it got me quite, sorry, the squeaky floorboards. That kind of got me really emotional thinking that. And then it just took me, then instantly my mind just went boom, straight back to my childhood. Because I feel like my childhood were robbed, robbed. I never got the chance to experience playing out or going out to my friends or going here, going there, you know what I mean? We, we were just basically stuck in the house just like prisoners basically 
Um, sorry, I just need to write the stomach down. One second, guys. Sorry, if I don't write stuff down that pops in my head, I do forget it straight instantly, and it's so hard to remember then. I thought of a good title last night of a video, and I woke up and I thought I should have wrote that down because I can't remember. I remember thinking something, but I can't remember. Anyhow, back to... So, I feel like my childhood was robbed. My teenage years were robbed, and part of my early adulthood adultness I don't well, I don't know what I'm saying was robbed by these not so nice people and you know what gets me they get now as an adult these people I remember some of them I do they start adding me on friend requests on Facebook I'm like how could you had someone that you freaking tortured for years and I mean tortured by it might so you might think, oh, what do you mean? I had a knife to my throat or my wrist. What do you want cutting first? That's what. I'm going to put a trigger warning on this video. That's, I should have warned you before I said that. If you thingy, throw it or your wrist, what do you want? I said, I don't know, one day I just had an appointment. You just get on with it. And I, I don't, you know what, when I said that, they were like, uh, what? they weren't expecting it. They were probably expecting me to go off crying. Um. Uh, and I remember going to school one day, got jumped out by a lad outside with a massive knife, kitchen knife. That scared the boo-boo out of me. I went home. You know what? My mum still went to school that day. She t she got the school to come and pick me up and take me. And I remember the teacher, Mrs Yates. That's, yeah, I remember a very clear as day. I'm like, how can you send me to school? Just like, <laughs> you know... I got it in school as well, and you know when you try that. And I think that's probably why I'm so so back in my learning because I'd sit, be sitting trying to listen to the teachers, and I'd get the chair pulled. And there's a lot of things that I haven't said over the years to you know because I didn't want to upset my mum as a kid. And half that stuff I never said because if she says that, she'll end up really getting upset and blah blah blah. And yeah. I feel like my, my childhood was robbed from me, from those horrible human beings. And people say, oh, they're just kids. They're just... No, these kids know exactly what they were saying. Even the parents were just as bad back then, you know what I mean? And I remember once I said, to, when the police turned up to my house, my mum, and we pointed where they lived, and I said, you I've had enough, I just want to die. I said that, and I did once try taking me on life. I never told anybody about that. I remember because I was feeling really poorly. I, was like, I never said out oh, how I'm still alive to this day. So I don't know because I, I really do. I'm not going to say what because I don't people go, oh, well, I'll try that. You know, it's not a laughing matter. This is a very serious thing. Um, but yeah, I spoke to my therapist about everything and I've kind of dealt with that now. But when I saw that, it just come racing back to me, if you know what I mean. So, this is why I always warn my kids, don't ever be like that kind of person. You know, if someone's doing something to you, please report it, tell me, let me know so we can get it dealt with. Because I won't wish my childhood on anybody. And I think that's the why I am the way I am to this day. That being said, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you because I've been babbling on for so long now and I am absolutely tired. Um, it's, it's, it could, you know, you don't realise how much someone drains you until, like, yeah, anyway, I won't go on. I've got heartburn. I'm going to have to go out because it really hurts and it's, it's really uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah. That being said, enjoy the rest of your Friday, guys. Even if you sat out having a barbecue at the pub, having a nice cold beer, or just sitting, chilling, having a cup of tea in front of the TV. Whatever you're doing, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your evening. Whatever time it is, because I can't, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you later, guys. See you later. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and that notification bell.